Hello, my name is Sid Trevor, and I'm here with Dr. Scott Hutel, the Jerry and Patricia Crawford Hubbard Professor of Neuroscience and Psychology. He received his PhD in Experimental uh, Psychology from Duke University and is the founding director of Duke University's Interdisciplinary Decision Sciences. He is, has won many awards, has authored over a hundred published peer-reviewed papers, and is wrote a book on functional MRI. He's also uh, been rated as one of the top 5% of all undergraduate instructors at Duke University, has been the past president of the Society of Neuroeconomics, and was chosen to teach the highly rated Behavioral Economics When Psychology and Economics Collide course for the great courses. Dr. Hutel, what exactly is neuroeconomics? So neuroeconomics is a extension of what's been an interest in economics for some time. The idea that there's there's anomalies or biases in our behavior that lead people to make decisions that are not exactly what would be predicted by traditional economic models. And in the neuro part of neuroeconomics has been a recognition really in the last 10 years that by understanding how the brain works, we may be able to better understand the causes of those biases. So we may be able to create some general story about how people make decisions that's based on the brain and lets us predict not only sort of the standard rational choices that economists have predicted for some time, but also the sort of errors or biases or anomalies in choice that we may con confront in our everyday lives. And so these biases and a lot anomalies impact the way we behave, both in economic situations, but in non-economic situations as well. That's right. right. These are these are general to all sorts of decision making. So when we make a decision about economics, we're using a general purpose decision making mechanism that has evolved over our entire history as a species. And for most of that history, we didn't have any sort of economics institutions. We didn't have banks. We didn't have money. But we had other people. We had resources. We had environments. We had, for much of that history, hunting or farming. And because of that, we had to make a lot of decisions. And we developed a decision-making apparatus that helps with those decisions, and it's now being applied to economic decisions.